Hello everybody and welcome to the next video in this series that I've been doing where I've been going over the official Unity ECS sample projects. In this one I'm going to be showing you how to spawn entities from mono behaviors. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to attach a mono behavior prefab to another mono behavior and then through code what we're going to do is we're going to convert that prefab from just a standard game object into an entity and then we're going to spawn it into our world using the entity manager. Now, you don't need to have seen all the videos in this tutorial series to kind of follow along what's going on, but it might be a good idea to just watch the first one where I kind of go over some of the basics of the entity component system and I show you how we can iterate through a bunch of entities using the entities dot for each lambda function. Also, if you don't know what ECS is at all and this is something completely brand new to you, definitely go check out the video that I made where I kind of go over the main concepts of the data origin technology stack and entity component system. So that'll help you get up to speed with everything that I'm talking about here. So of course the project files featured in this video are official ones from Unity and I'll leave a link where you can download that down in the description right below those like and subscribe buttons. By the way, if you do have any questions or suggestions for future videos, feel free to leave those down in the comment section below. But let's jump right on into the video. Okay, so here we are over in Unity. This is the fourth sample called Spawn from Mono Behavior. I'm just opening up the Spawn from Mono Behavior scene here. And you'll see this scene is completely empty. We just have a camera, a light, and this spawner game object here. And the spawner game object does just have this single spawner script, which we'll be getting into in a minute. But let me just go ahead and demonstrate to you what happens when we hit the play button here. You see basically it creates this 10 by 10 grid of uh, again these kind of double cubes where we have like a bigger cube and a smaller child cube here. Of course we can actually go on to this spawner component and make this much bigger so maybe we wanted to make it a 100 by 100 field of these. So now we have a ton of these guys just going on forever with all these these waves of cubes here. So this is uh, you know just pretty mesmerizing to look at. You can just kind of sit here hang out and look at it for a little while and then for the prefab value we just have this cube here if we actually go and open up this cube you'll see that it's um, pretty simple the only real unique thing that we have on it here is just this rotation speed for each authoring script again this is the same authoring script that we used on the sample number one on the for each video and here we can just specify the radians per second of how quickly the cube rotates and you'll notice that it actually does not have a convert to entity script on it and and that's because we're going to actually be converting this game object to an entity through our spawner code. Anyhow, if we do open up that script, this is what we're gonna see here. It's just a pretty simple script. Again, it is a mono behavior script, but we are gonna be using some of the um, dots and ECS specific libraries such as entity, mathematics, and transforms. Of course, we still want to be using the Unity engine for a couple of the things such as game objects. So um, for example, we have our public variables here. We're starting with a public game object, which is going to be the prefab, which we're going to be spawning. And instead of doing what we would traditionally do in Unity where we just spawn the prefab, we're actually gonna convert this game object into an entity. And then we'll, once we have that reference to the entity, then we're gonna spawn that entity, you know, however many times that we want. Okay, and here's where we just define the X and Y values for our field of entities. And then basically everything just happens within the start function here so the first thing that we're actually going to be doing is converting the game object from a game object into an entity so first we need to set up some of the game object conversion settings and the way we get that is from world and then we're going to specify which world that we want these settings from and so the world is going to be world dot default game object injection world that's just kind of the standard world that we use for converting game objects into entities and then we're just going to pass in null here. This is a uh, reference to the blob asset store, um, which we do not need at this moment. So we can just pass in null right here. So again, we're just going to save this all to a variable called settings. Next, we're going to create a variable called prefab. Note that this is a lowercase p prefab, which is different than the game object, which is a capital P prefab. So this lowercase p prefab, this is going to represent the entity that we're going to be spawning in our world. And so we're actually gonna be setting that here. So we're gonna be using the game object conversion utility. And then we're gonna do dot convert game object hierarchy. So this actually converts the game object as well as all the child game objects of that into an entity. So with this convert game object hierarchy here, we just pass in the game object that we want to convert, which in this case is the capital P prefab 
which is just this public field that we have on this script here. And then we're also going to need to pass in our game object conversion settings. And so this line right here, that's basically what converts this game object and all the child game objects into entities. And so here we just have this uh, lowercase p prefab, which is a reference to our entity, which we're going to be spawning. After that, we're going to need a reference to the entity manager. And the entity manager is going to allow us to instantiate these entities as well as set the component data for where they actually are physically in our game world. So the way we do that, we just have this variable called entity manager, and we're going to set that equal to world dot default game object injection world. Again, the same world that we're using up here dot entity manager. So that's just how we get a reference to the entity manager that we need. Now here we're just going to do some nested for loops for the X and Y axes of our grid. So we're just going to start at zero and go all the way up to um, the number that we specified in both the X and Y directions. And now at each of the individual locations, basically, we're just going to create this new variable called instance, which we're going to be setting equal to an entity manager dot instantiate passing in this lowercase p prefab. Again, this is a reference to the entity prefab. So this entity manager dot instantiate, that's what actually spawns this entity within our game world. And then we're just gonna cache a reference to that in this instance variable so we can set the position on it, which is what we're gonna do right now. So first we're actually going to, you know, determine what position we want this to be at. So we're gonna get this variable position and we'll set that equal to transform dot transform point. Basically, this just means that we're spawning the entity at a world point in relative location to the spawner game object. So all the transform positions are going to be in relation to the original spawner game object. So here we're going to set the X position equal to um, whatever identifier X number it is multiplied by 1.3. And we do that to just give us a little bit of space between all the different um, entities. After that, we're going to be using this noise.c noise, and that just kind of gives us that variability. That's how we can actually get the waves and all the height between all these. So we're going to set that for the y axis of each of these. So you can see kind of how that's calculated there. This just kind of adds a little bit of randomness in that height. And then lastly, for the z position, we're just going to take the y index and multiply that by 1.3, just again, so we can kind of have some space between all the different entities. So now once we have that all set in this position variable, we can go and say entity manager dot set component data. And so this is pretty self explanatory. We're just setting the existing component data. Um, in this case, it's going to be for the translation component. And we're going to be doing this on our instance, which again is this entity that we created up here. So we're going to be setting the translation component of this actual instant entity. And so on the translation, basically, we're just going to set value equal to this position variable, which we created here. So I mean, that is all pretty straightforward. I'm just going to go back into unity here. Again, you know, if we hit play, we just have this same thing. And then like I mentioned, if we wanted to say maybe create another one of these, so we can say duplicate this spawner, and um, we'll move it up and kind of over a little bit here. And we'll make this one only spawn say 25 by 20. Now when we hit play, you'll see that we have uh, two of these. We have one that's quite a bit smaller. This is one that I just spawned. And again, you'll see that all these entities are spawning within relation to the original spawner object. Now we can move this spawner object around all we want, but it's not gonna actually move these entities because once the entities are spawned, they don't really care where they came from. You know, the, the spawner just kind of puts them out into the world and then they're there. And so that is an overview of the Unity sample project on how to spawn entities from a mono behavior. Really hope you found this video helpful. If you did, make sure you leave it a like. Also feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots more videos on the entity component system and all sorts of new features coming to the Unity game engine. Of course, if you have any questions for me or suggestions for future videos, feel free to leave those down in the comment section below. But I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one.